Hey guys, how's it going? Zach here. Thanks for tuning into the channel. And today's video, I want to show you how to set up an industrial application using uh, React and Node.js uh, to make your own modern web interface for an industrial application, like a SCADA application. Uh, original credit to Josh McGuian. Uh, links to the description on the original blog post on how on how to do this. This is how I followed his instructions and, and set it up. So I just wanted to share this with you guys, show you how easy it is. And it's really cool, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, so let's get started on how to do it. So the first thing we need to do is uh, download and uh, install Ignition. So go to inductiveautomation.com. Up in the right, click Download Ignition. Scroll down and you want to download this 64-bit uh, version. 7.9.4 is the latest release at the time of the filming. And we're also going to scroll down to device connectivity and download this web dev module. I've already downloaded those, so let's go ahead and run them. I'm just going to go ahead and click through this installer real quick and easy. And now that that's done, let's go ahead and start up Ignition. The very next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, install that web dev module. Once Ignition installs, uh, go to localhost port 8088. And there we are. The uh, here we are at the gateway homepage. Log over to the go over to the configure tab and log in with admin password. On the left, you'll see modules. Scroll down to the very bottom and click install or upgrade module, and navigate to that web dev module. One click to install. Accept the license agreement. Select backup restore, restore and then select that Ignition API backup and click Restore. Okay, the Ignition API project is back up and going. Once that's done, let's go ahead and install Node.js. Go to node.js.org and download the current version. And I've already downloaded it here on my desktop, so let's go ahead and run it. It's a real simple installation. Once Node's installed, you're going to want to open up a command prompt. You want to run npm install minus g create dash react dash app. That's going to go ahead and set up the React framework on Node.js. Once that's done, we're going to want to navigate to our project directory. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder here on the desktop for our project. Once we're in that folder where we want to create our project, we're going to run create react app and the name of, of the project that we want to create. I'm just going to go ahead and install it in that folder. Now our react uh, is set up, so we want to change directory into that folder that it created. So here's that folder. It created a, a folder called ignition app with inside of our project folder. So once we're in there, we're going to want to run npm start. So that's going to go ahead and start up our development server. Now we can launch localhost port 3000, and there it is. There's our React web server. It's really simple, but I think this is a little logo is kind of cool. So in just over nine minutes, we've installed Ignition, installed the web dev module, installed Node.js, and, and set up the React development environment and started the server. So now we're almost there. So we just got to set up the link between Ignition and React and then display tag value. So let's go ahead. This NPM right here, this command window, we got to leave it open because it's the one that's actually running our server right now. So let's go ahead and open up another command prompt. Change directories back to the folder where our project is. Once we're in our project directory, we're going to run a one npm install https forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash Josh McWeegan ignition dash web dash hawk dot git minus minus save. So what that's going to do is going to go out and install the uh, Ignition Web Hawk 
which is the connectivity piece between uh, React and Ignition. In this part, you do have to have Git installed, so if you don't, you'll get an error message. And just go ahead and install Git. It looks like this. Um, once that's set up, we're going to want to go into our project folder and open up the package.json file. And here at the end, we're going to want to add another entry. And it's going to be proxy keyword and the value of HTTP colon forward slash local host port 8088. And what that's going to do is allow um, a proxy to go through to our ignition server and allow that communication to happen. Make sure to enter in this little comma right here. Hit save. Go back to your NPM. Hit control C. Yes. And run NPM start again. And that's going to restart our React development server. Now we got to copy and paste this text right here. And this is actually what's going to show up on our React server. So right now we have that connection made, but we still don't have anything showing up on the screen. So what this code will do is actually um, create that tag value display class. And then you in your app.js, you can actually instantiate an instance of that and show it, make it show up on the screen. So we're going to file, save as. We're going to go into source, and we're going to name it tag value display dot jsx open up that source folder and edit the app dot js the first thing we need to do is import that tag value display dot jsx file we just created type in import tag value display from and then the path to that folder to that file tag value display here on line 16 right above this div we're going to want to actually put that on the screen so we'll do tag value display tag path equals air temperature and just so you can see when we hit save you should see this refresh and there it is tag path air temperature value 24 so there you have it. In 15 minutes, we've been able to set up React, set up Ignition, set, uh, add a few files of code, add a few lines of code, and there we have a tag value displaying um, air temperature on a React app. Now, obviously, you might want to elaborate from here, but you know the the, the possibilities are endless from here. Uh, you could download maybe other frameworks and get a nice navigation system going, maybe some trends. Um, maybe expand that Ignition API to do some tag history. Um, there's already a tag browse feature, so you can maybe use the structure of your tags to drive your navigation. And I think that's what Josh did in a more advanced example I haven't taken a look at yet. But I just thought this was so cool, I wanted to share it with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. If you guys liked it, let me know by hitting that like button or send me a message in the comments. If you have any future suggestions on what we can dive deeper into, let me know. I'd really like to hear from you guys. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to catch the next video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Um, and it's pretty fast too. Like, you know, React is... You know, it can run on any web browser, it can run on any phone, um, and it's scalable, uh, it's responsive, and that's the word that they use for it. Um, there's a ton of benefits for this, but I'm going to go ahead and end this video here.